Hello, and welcome to our Senior Design presentation. We are Group 36, the Kinetic Energy Recovery System for a Bicycle. My name is Edward Romer, and with me today is Claudio Sanchez, Enoch Asari, Sin San Chan, and Talal Benjibail. Our advisor for this project is Professor Everardo Hernandez. This uh, presentation includes um, introduction. We have uh, project management. We have technical analysis. Uh, dynamic braking system, automatic shifting, thermo electric generators, bicycle design, and then the summary. The background, scope, and problem deliverable will be discussed by uh, Edward and myself. In order to understand how our kinetic energy recovery system works, first we need to understand what kinetic energy recovery is. So we can do this by thinking of brakes and how they work. Brakes create a loss of kinetic energy in the system due to friction. So when we think of kinetic energy recovery, we think of deceleration other than friction in a way that energy can be saved and stored for later use. Our kinetic energy recovery system uses, uses something called dynamic braking. Dynamic braking works a lot like the images to the right. The first image you can see a motor in which electrons flow through a coil, creating a magnetic field, therefore spinning the motor. To the right of that, you can see a generator where the magnet on the outside of the coil is spun, therefore creating a current flowing through the coil. The scope and problem. The main purpose of this project is to design a kinetic energy recovery system for a bicycle which recovers energy through braking. Um, the system generates and loses energy faster than the charging rate of the battery, which is a problem we will solve. This table illustrates um, items that are going to be delivered at the end of the semester. We have dynamic braking system, which is our main system. We have automatic gearing system. We have bicycle frame and we have uh, thermoelectric generators. The organization of the project is going to be discussed by Claudio. The system has been broken up to four main sections. First, we have the dynamic braking system, which is the main portion of our project. Next is the automatic gear system, which was split up between Edward, Sinsan, and Enoch. I took care of creating a concept for the bicycle frame designs along with Sinsan. Also looked into all the electrical energy systems that can be implemented along with the regenerative braking system. Although the work has been broken up into different sections, the team met up on a weekly basis and constructive criticism was always welcomed. For technical analysis, we will be reviewing the requirements of the state of California and the forces required to move the bike from stop. For the requirement, average bicycles in the market recovers about 5% of energy. This will be verified through algorithm. Uh, per California standard regulation, our system cannot exceed maximum power of 750 watts maximum speed of 20 miles per hour and the system must be assisted to throttle controllers this will be verified through planning average power output and torque required to move the bicycle after collecting the data we want to find how we can get the bicycle accelerate from rest to 12 mile per 12.5 mile per hour in the time of eight seconds. In order for us to find the required power and torque, we had calculated all the forces involved during the ride. Calculating first force by denoting second law that says the acceleration of an object is directly related to the net force and inversely related to its mass. Friction and air resistance forces. And the total of three forces is involved in the ride, which will be introduced. Second force and third force will be as the following. Second is the friction force and third is the air resistance force. Um, the rolling resistance force is equal to C, the rolling resistance coefficient, times M, the mass, times G, the gravitational constant. Third and last force is the air resistance force which equals to CD 
drag coefficient times v velocity times b the density times a the frontal area the rolling resistance coefficient is roughly 0 0.008 therefore the rolling resistance is equal to the coefficient times the mass times the gravity which equals to 7.84 newton now finding the air resistance force where the coefficient of drag is equal to 1.1 the density of air is equal to 1.2 kilogram by meter cubed and the frontal area of the body is equal to 0.51 meter squared the average acceleration of the bicycle is equal to 5.59 meter by second so the uh, the air is, uh, resistance force is equal to 10.51 Newton. The sum of all the forces, which equals to 70.13 Newton. Average power output and torque. Now that we have all the forces, so to find the average power needed, we have the power is equal to force times the velocity, which equals to 70.13 Newton times the velocity 5.588 meter per second which equal to 391.88 watts um, torque needed at the center of the wheel to reach the required speed which we have torque is equal the force times the distance which uh, the, the distance is the radius of the wheel so we have 70.13 newton times 0.3683 meter which equal to 25.83 newton per meter the dynamic braking system was split up into several subcomponents First, we consist of the background, the problem statement, the introduction to capacitors, and component selection. Then we move on to calculations, show results, and the electrical schematic. Our dynamic braking system uses the motor as both the driver and the generator. In order to do this, we need two key components. First being the hall sensor. A hall sensor is capable of measuring RPMs by measuring a change in magnetic field and also senses the direction of current in a wire. The next key component is the Vetter Electronic Speed Controller, otherwise known as the VESC. The VESC is a programmable electronic speed controller, which we can program the minimum and the maximum speed of the motor, as well as the maximum charging current. In order to understand the energy in the system, first we need to look at the energy produced from stopping, which is the maximum amount of energy at any given time. The equation for this is the efficiency of the motor times one half mv squared which is the kinetic energy. To calculate this, we need to assume some values. The first value we're going to assume is the mass, which is 100 kilograms. The next value is the velocity, 9 meters per second, which is about 20 miles per hour. Then we're going to assume the efficiency of the motor, which is about 90%. Plugging these values in, we get an energy that is roughly 3.6 kilojoules. To calculate the time needed to stop, first we have to think of a theoretical lithium-ion battery, which would be 48 volts and would charge at about 5 amps in. So we multiply the charging current times the voltage and we get 240 joules per second. Divide the total energy by this 240 joules per second and we learn that it takes 15 seconds to stop the bike at 20 miles per hour. Now this is a problem that we need to solve. As dynamic braking system generate and loses energy at fast rate, we needed a system that would be able to store the energy generated. Supercapacitor is this system. Supercapacitors charge and discharge very quickly. They are also able to hold high, a high amount of energies. Um, energy stored in a supercapacitor, we have it as one half capacitor times volt square and energy produced by stopping as Edward spoke about in previous slide. We have it as efficiency times one half times the mass times velocity square. So when we equate this equation, we're able to 
um, solve for capacitor. So we have it as uh, mass times velocity square times efficiency over the volt square. For the component selection for dynamic braking system, we selected maximum voltage because it gives us a high charge rate. It gives us a high torque from motor. It also gives us low capacitance minimum, which can be seen in previous equations. Uh, as uh, the image shows, uh, it shows the motor that we selected. We have a, a 48 volts with 750 watts and a a whole sensor with VESC controller. The battery that is going to be used in the system is a 48 volt lithium ion battery with waterproof case and battery management system. It will power the 750 watt motor and charged by the VESC. The capacity of the battery is 7.8 amp hour in 30 minutes usage. The Battery management system will prevent overcharge, overdischarge, overcurrent, and short circuit. Therefore, we can expect the battery will have a longer life. From the calculation of the capacitor energy, the capacitor used in the system has to be at least 3 FW. Since the system is 48 volt, while each capacitor is 2.7 volt only, we need multiple capacitors to achieve the 48 volt. As the capacitor connected in series, the voltage of each capacitor will sum up, while the capacitance will decrease. When connected in parallel, the voltage will remain, and remain the same, but the capacitance will sum up. Enoch will discuss how the target layout achieved that in the next slide. We created a calculator in my lab to help us decide from a wide range of capacitors which is best for our project. Based on equation previously discussed, we input known values and distributor option. The code outputs a proper battery size, the number of capacitors needed for our capacitor bank as well as the configuration. The output also gives us the total capacitance of the bank. As indicated based on the readout of our code, we need 18 2.7 volts 100 ferrites capacitance all running in series this gives us a capacitor bank of 48.6 60 volts with a total of 5.56 ferrites in order to run calculations for this project we need real bicycle data we get our data from an app called strava Strava displays its data in a dynamic graph, where every second it gives you the distance, time, elevation, percent grade, and velocity of the ride. We're able to extract this data using a technique called web scraping. To do this, you have to right click on the graph and click inspect element. Once the data is found, you can move this to an Excel spreadsheet, which can be accessed later by MATLAB. After collecting the data, the moment when curve system is generating energy or the motor is using the energy are determined under several condition. When the bike is going downhill, it has to slow down to maintain a safer speed through dynamic braking. Hence, we calculated the energy generated when the bike is slowing down with decreasing in altitude. Since both kinetic energy and potential energy are losing to the recovery system, there is a negative sign before the kinetic energy and potential energy in the equation. In our system, the motor will start working when the bike is speeding up from a speed lower than 10 miles per hour or traveling uphill. Therefore, the equation is applied when the bike is speeding up from any speed less than 10 miles per hour or experiencing increase in potential energy. As the rider may pedal the bike, and the energy usage of the motor will be reduced. Therefore, there is a minus 75 watt time time in the equation, while the 75 watt is the average pedaling power of a person. Since the maximum power of the motor is 750 watt, 
So any energy above it will become 70, 750 watts only in both generation and consumption. Figure shows the relationship between the velocity and the energy generated. As you can see, when the velocity is decreasing, there is an energy being generated. This has to be doing with the fact that whenever the rider applies the brakes, the dynamic braking will be generating energy. The figure on the right shows the altitude and the energy generated as a function of time. Looking at this figure, you can see that fast drops in altitude coincide with peaks in energy generated. What this means in reality is that the rider is using their brakes to maintain or slow down their speed downhill. The figure shows a direct relationship between kinetic energy generated and the velocity of the bike at any specific time. Whenever the bike brakes, the velocity slows down drastically over a short period of time. This figure shows the altitude and the energy used as a function of time. Looking at this figure, you can see that the peaks in the energy used coincide with the uphill climbs of the bike ride. What this shows in reality is that the motor is being used to assist the rider going uphill. The graph shows a comparison between energy use and energy generated per time. Besides the Y data showed in the previous slide, four other Y data were taken into account for calculating the efficiency of the recovery system. The energy generated is the energy that is going to be recovered by the curve system, and the efficiency is the energy generated divided by the energy used. In white form, the energy generated during the ride was higher than the energy used, which caused an efficiency larger than 100%. It happened because most of the time in this ride was downhill and it used less energy to finish the ride. Also, the ride is one way only, therefore the amount of energy was lower than the other four rides. By comparing the energy used in the ride to the total energy in the battery, the energy consumed from the battery is about 10 to 30%, which the battery wouldn't run out of charge during this ride. At the same time, the recoverable energy could charge up to 2 to 5% among the total battery capacity. To find out the average efficiency of the system, the energy data were averaged into per mile, and the efficiency was 26%, which is higher than the 5% energy recovery requirement. This electrical schematic is showing how different components are wired in the system. Since the battery is going to be charged and discharged, the capacitor in the circuit may damage and cause dangerous due to the backward flow current. Therefore, diode is used in the circuit which could limit the current flow in one direction only. There are two diodes wired in parallel layout but in opposite direction and capacitor will wired in series with one of them. The orange arrow indicates the charging current flow which would only go through the capacitor located in the bottom part of the parallel circuit. The red arrow is the discharging current flow which won't flow through the path with capacitor since the diode next to it is in opposite direction. Therefore, the capacitor is protected from backward flow current. Next, we will talk about the design of the automatic gearing system. The automatic gearing system is controlled by an Arduino, which is an object-oriented microcontroller. The automatic gearing system has its own independent battery and works by varying gear sizes depending on the speed of the system. The way it does this is by using a derailleur cable controlled by a servo, as seen on the figure to the right. It's able to measure the speed of the system using a cadence sensor, which is something we'll discuss later in the presentation. A servo is a motor that's able to actuate in degrees. For this project, we're going to use a high torque servo, being as the servo has metal gears, which are more resistant to slippage, and has a higher torque output than average hobby servos. This figure shows the electrical schematic for the automatic gearing system. I'm going to start off by discussing the display screen, which will be used to show the rider's speed and current gear. In line with the display screen is a 10 kilo ohm potentiometer, which controls the brightness of the screen. To the right of the screen is the high torque servo. The high torque servo is used to control the bicycle's gear. 
To the right of that is the cadence sensor, which is used to measure the bicycle's speed. Below all this is three buttons. These three buttons are used to shift the gears of the bicycle up or down, and also to toggle the automatic gearing system. To the right of everything is the power supply. We can see that the battery is connected to the main battery of the bicycle using a DC to DC converter, otherwise known as a 48 volt step down, to convert the 48 volts from the main battery to the five volts of the Arduino's battery. The Arduino's battery is also hooked up to a battery charger module, which is used to regulate an inconsistent current from the thermal electric generators to both power the Arduino and charge the battery. The automatic gearing system, cadence sensor. Cadence sensor measures the speed of the bicycle. The way it does it is that there is a whole sensor placed somewhere on the bicycle, two magnets on the wheel, and as the wheel spin the magnet pass in front of the horse sensor it sends a message to the adreno the horse sensor that we use is non-latching horse sensor which means it measures the changes in magnetic state as you can see in the image showing the effect of horse sensor the way non-latching horse sensor work is for instance is zero and then measures and then magnet passes in front, it's one, then it goes back to zero. It doesn't stay at one like latching hole sensors. High sensitivity. This means we are able to measure high speed as it passes multiple times. Because it's two magnets, uh, we are measuring in half revolution and it returns in the computer revolutions per minute. The equation at the bottom um, just convert RPM to speed using the diameter of the wheel and calculating the circumference of the wheel using, using that as the distance that is traveled. The three, uh, 63,360 number at the bottom is just to convert the wheel diameter from inches to miles. Each gear is designated a degree in the servo. Um, we have two modes. We have the manual mode and automatic mode. The automatic mode also includes manual shift, but for the manual shift, it takes input from bottom to change gears. The automatic shift, uh, it shifts each gear when it is in the range of a specific speed, pauses the system to shift. As you can see on the uh, right, um, we have the bottom that we'll be able to shift between gears and we have the stop and start button. To determine at which point to shift, Torque and angular velocity of each gear have to be found. The store torque and low load speed of each gear is found using the data from the motor specification sheet and divide those data by the gear ratio. Then the torque and power at every single angular velocity up to the low load speed is calculated by this equation. By plotting the torque versus angular velocity, there is an intersecting point between two gears and we decided as that as our shifting point. Since the torque and angular velocity of both gears are the same, the shift shock will be minimized and no energy loss during the shifting process. In the shifting point plot, we can find a smooth torque curve over the angular velocity. And there are six gears only in that plot because due to the California standard regulation, the speed of the bike couldn't go faster than 20 miles per hour. As the shifting point between 6th and 7th gear is 22 miles per hour, the system will stop shifting at that point. Besides, we will limit the motor rotation per minute to 1300 RPM in the VTSC so that the bike wouldn't go over 20 miles per hour.
besides the talk, report the power versus angular velocity for speeding up from stop to 20 miles per hour. The shifting point is at the maximum power of each gear, which make use of the highest efficiency of each gear. Also, from the power versus angular velocity plot, the power beyond the maximum point is decreasing, which is useless. Therefore, the shifting point should be located before the power drops. In the next part, Claudio will introduce the thermal electric generator, used to recover more energy besides the kinetic energy. Thermal electric generators work by using a temperature difference between plates to convert into electrical energy. The way they, this works is we have N-type semiconductor pellets and P-type semiconductor pellets. Each one of these conductors are made of difficult, different chemi chemi chemical components that when uh, different temperatures are applied to it between hot and cold, there is a movement of electrons between the conductors which in turn turn into electrical energy that we can use to charge the battery and power our Arduino. Um, these will be placed along the casing along with a heat sink in order to create a larger temperature difference between the outside and inside temperature of the motor. In our thermoelectric components of our system, we want to harness as much energy lost due to heat from the dynamic braking system so that we can power the Arduino and recharge our battery. These thermoelectric generators will be placed along the case along with the heat sink in order to increase the surface area which it covers. The greater the temperature difference that we achieve, the greater amount of energy we can um, produce. As you can see on the graph, just with a, a 20 degree difference, we, we could be able to output a voltage of at least one volt and a current of 200 milliamps. The equation shows that the energy created will be a product of the temperature difference, the Seebeck coefficient, and the local conductivity. The latter two, which can be found on the thermoelectric generator data sheet. That is why it is important that the temperature difference is as great as possible by creating a larger uh, surface area. Using Newton's law of cooling, the average heat transfer rate was found using the average temperature of a running motor and the average temperature of the surrounding areas, which in California is around 27 degrees Celsius. In order to create a larger temperature difference between the surface temperature and the surrounding temperature, a heat sink is installed in order to create a greater temperature difference. As you can see, in order to receive a greater uh, temperature difference of at least 5 degrees Celsius, our surface area would need to be increased to up to 0 0.055 meters squared. The bicycle design consisted of a suspension system that was aimed at creating a smooth ride of any size commute, and the frame design was created in order to fit any size riders. For our suspension system, we wanted to make it as comfortable as possible, so we decided on a full sus suspension system, which consists of rear forks moving, as well as the front forks going up and down. The full suspension system will give the rider better handling and a smoother ride and is equipped for a variety of terrain. As seen in the image above, the suspension system moves through various pivot points, allowing the rear forks to move up and down in order to adjust to different terrains. The battery placement was intended to be as near the capacitor so we could not have too many wires running. The high torque servo was placed as close to the rear wheels where it would be moving the derailleur and the Arduino case was placed as close as possible to the servo to avoid running too many wires throughout moving parts as well. The magnets placed were along the wheel rim at 180 degrees in order to have the cadence sensor read the rotations per minute. This information was then sent to the Arduino for the automatic shifting system. The sink, heat sink was placed underneath the motor in order to receive the most direct contact with the surrounding air. The freewheel allows the rider to only pedal forward and not backwards. By using a one-way bearing, the placement of the motor and the components was to keep the weight of the bike as close to the center of the mass as possible. The adjustable seat was designed to go down as low as possible to hit the top support of the frame in order to accommodate very sized riders. 
finally, we're going to move on to the conclusion of this project. During this presentation, we showed many things that we went over in this project. We showed that we fixed the problem of the limited charging current going into the battery using a supercapacitor bank as well as a battery management system to protect the battery. We showed that the energy recovery on average for this bicycle is about 26%. We also created an automatic gearing system, which will provide the most comfortable ride for the rider with no extra work. It's also going to pre create a much more efficient system and keep our maximum speed to 20 miles per hour. We also went over the SOLIDWORK sketches of the 3D parts of the bicycle. I hope you enjoyed our presentation. Here are the references that we used for this project. Feel free to check any of these out if you want to do any research of your own.